everybody. It's Vana, the Twisted Stitcher, and today I'm coming here to share with you how I put together strawberries. This is the pattern that we're working on, Sunshine Berry by Erica Michaels. This is the linen berry, not the silk berry. So you have your piece cross-stitched, and what I do first is I iron it. If you would like to know how I iron my pieces, please go to my Back to Basics Finishing School that I have on my channel entitled Ironing Your Project, and that will tell you how I iron my pieces. After you iron it from the back side, I, add, I have already added some interfacing. The type of interfacing that I use is a light iron-on interfacing from Pellon, and it is P44F. Pellon P44F. I buy this online by the bolt from Joanne Fabrics. Interfacing goes on sale frequently from joannes.com and I buy it by the bolt then. Okay, so you have it ironed. I've attached the, the, the interfacing per instructions, per the manufacturer's instructions, which just is put the sticky side down and iron it. I do use a little steam just to get it on there very well, okay? So, so we have our piece prepared. The next thing is that in these patterns, now she has stitched hers on um, 32 count. This Sunshine Berry is 32 count R&R &R fabrics, antique cotton is what this piece is stitched on. These pieces were all stitched by Anne, who is the owner of the Shepherd's Needle in, oh gosh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And I'm the house finisher for her shop. And so this berry and the others that you will see at the end were all stitched by Anne. And maybe the ladies in her shop, I think Anne stitched them all. In um, Little Rock, Arkansas at the Shepherd's Needle. So follow Anne on Instagram and Facebook, and she also has her own YouTube channel. If you're in the Little Rock, Arkansas area, stop into the Shepherd's Needle and see Anne and the ladies there and some of the pieces that I finished for their shop. In the back of all of these design patterns, there is a template, okay? And on this template, she specifically says that this is not the full size, that there's the fold line and, you know, you have to double this to make the pattern. So what I've done since I finished several of these is that this is like a plastic that, if you remember um, overhead, how teachers in class would have these plastic clear sheets of paper and they would write on them and then the overhead projector would project it on the screen. Uh, this is basically what that is, just a clear plastic sheet. I get them from Amazon. I use them for patterns and I save them in a book. But anyways, this is the pattern and all I did was, is I laid my eight and a half by 11 sheet of this plastic on here. I drew around it exactly. I, li I lined up, as you can see, I made a line so I could line up. I drew one side, then I flipped it over, lined up this center line and drew the other side and cut it out. That's all I did to make my pattern. And then I saved these because I know I'll have other people that send me strawberries and I save these in a folder and then I pull it out, okay? That's what I do to make my pattern. You don't have to do this unless you're planning on making a lot of strawberries, then I suggest you do this and that saves you time when you finish the other ones. Now then, a word on this pattern. This is for this model. This pattern is for the size that she stitched it on, which is 32 count. If you stitch it on a higher count, like 40 count, or you stitch it on a lower count, like let's say 25 or, or 14, 
if you'd stitch it on 14 count Ada or 25 or 28 count linen or whatever, um, you'll have to adjust this. You'll have to adjust it a little bit, but you can still use this simple, the simple uh, pattern to kind of like, you know, just add on if you need to. Okay, so the next thing that I, you want to look at is how far from the bottom of this that she, you know, from where's the tip? Because a lot of times people want to put it right there, and of course then that's, you can tell that if you put the tip right at the end of the flower, that's not going to get all the writing and everything. So you kind of have to look on her pattern where she placed the tip of the strawberry. So what I do, once I have my pattern drawn, is I kind of center it, right? You want the center line going right down the center of the fabric, okay? Of the, pe of the piece, okay? Can you see that? Then I take a pencil and I trace around the whole piece, how I'm gonna sew it. You want to make sure that the there's equidistance between the writing on each side so that it's kind of equal. Now what I'm drawing is where we're going to actually sew. So we can use it, that's where the line of our sewing is going to be. So we can use this to, uh, to sew on. It's not going to be a big deal. Okay, so you pull it away. I got off a little bit there. You pull it away, that's where my line is, okay, on both sides. All right, now we're gonna cut out. I take, so that I know you have to have a seam allowance. I draw another from about a half inch, quarter, quarter of an inch on the sides here. And I just draw it, just take a pencil and draw right there. And I take a quarter, I measure a quarter inch from this edge and I draw like that, okay? Then I'm gonna take about a half an inch, I'm gonna do about a half of inch to three fourths of an inch extra at the top. And the reason is that you're gonna fold that over so that you don't have any raw linen and I do about a half of an inch. And I just kind of make little marks where the half of the inch is, and then I kind of connect them. It's not, it doesn't have to be precise because this is what's gonna be folded over, okay? Now then you're gonna notice that I don't have interfacing out here, but that doesn't matter because where we sew is where we want the interfacing. I put interfacing on this because what I stuff my berries with is walnut, crushed walnut shells. Crushed walnut shells are kiln dried, but they probably still contain um, some acid. So I use interfacing to keep it away from the stitching. And this is pretty tough interfacing, so I don't feel, I've never had anything discolor or anything like that, but I do use walnut shells. If you don't want to use it, walnut shells, then um, probably this tutorial's not for you. But I use walnut shells because of how they pack the pack in the, in the strawberry, how they make, give it a little bit of weight, and how they just, they make beautiful strawberries. So that's what I use in all my strawberries. That and something else that I'll sh t t share with you later. Okay, so where we're gonna cut is th this second line that we drew, okay? So just cut out, I just cut it with my scissors. Okay, so this is trash. We're gonna throw this away. Now then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some straight pins. We are going to, you know, visually we know that this is the center. So we're gonna kind of, 
I kind of finger press where the center is. And you want to make it sure that it that it lines up with the point of that triangle that we drew on from the pattern. Okay. All right. So there we have that. Now then, before we pin, we want to make sure that this line that we drew matches up with this line, and that the words kind of all go together nicely, line up nicely. So I try to do that, I kind of like lay, lay them up and then I fold it over just to see, is it looking good? Because you want You Are My Sunshine to kind of match up on the back there. And that looks pretty good. Kind of stick a neat a, a pin in there to see where it's at coming out the other side and then kind of match up that top corner by hitting it on the other side see so I put the needle in or the pin on this side and then I made sure that it came out right at the tip of the other corner and then kind of again see does it match up pretty good and it does so we're going to put needles or not needles pins all along that edge there and then i check one more time after i put my i'm kind of anal about this because you don't want to rip out yep pretty good so we'll just go along check one more time to make sure the words are good and they are all along there now we're going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to follow this line exactly now then I'm not going to take you over to the sewing machine because it's silly to do that it's all it is is a straight stitch on the sewing machine I'm going to put my needle here I'm going to start go up I'm going to go re in reverse to lock and then I'm going to go forward and just slowly 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 up this line till I get to right here then I'm going to reverse and go forward again and stop and that locks and reinforces both those corners okay let me go do that and i'll be right back all right so i'm back and i have as you can see i reinforced the stitches on the end and on that end all right so before i cut anything or clip anything you want to pull it you want to turn it out to see did everything line up good right did we spend enough time figuring everything out and as you can see this is where i'm mostly concerned and it looks great i'll poke this out when we clip it but it looks awesome everything is is sewn just like don't you know don't clip anything until you know that everything's perfect okay so now we're gonna i'm gonna clip across the edge right there and then i'm gonna just kind of I'm going to just kind of take a little bit off the side there to debulk that area kind of like that went across and then I just kind of debulked it a little bit and I'm ready to turn it out okay all right so turn it out you don't want to get your point your really pointy bamboo turn points turner down there bamboo points turner let me show you what that is this is what I typically poke out with. I'm not going to use that today because I don't want to like really jam down there. Most strawberries aren't like completely pointy in nature. <laughs> so I don't get it completely out. I just don't want it to look nasty on the edge. So that is pointy enough for our purposes. Let me go just a little bit more because I don't like it when it folds over like that where it looks like a belly button. I don't like that. Okay, so pretty good. It looks like an ice cream cone, right? Now then, the next thing that we're going to do is see there's my top line. You can see. And what I do is I just finger press this over like this. Now then, instead of opening this seam, I don't do that. I just push it to one side and I just kind of finger press the 
the seam to one side. Whichever way it seems like it's fold, it's you know laying is the way I finger press it. And then I start folding over. You just want the edge of the linen right at the top of that pencil line that we drew. When it's at the seam, I kind of put an, a uh, pin there to kind of hold that down. You don't have to do that, but for today I will so that it stays out of the way, okay? And then just finger press it down. I got called out on one of these videos that I said okay like I meant everybody was stupid. And I do not say okay because I think you're all stupid. It's just a habit and I'm sorry. I'm talking to myself doing these videos and I just want to make sure everybody is with me and following along. So if I say okay after everything I say, it's not because I think you're stupid or that you can't follow what I'm doing. I'm here in, in this basement by myself, trying to make this tutorial, talking to myself. So that's why I say okay. Okay, so when you kind of have that all kind of finger pressed down, it will not stay, but you can see how I've made a, a fold there and it you can see the fold. I'm gonna get all the way around this, the strawberry here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're just making the top of that linen reach the top of the pencil drawn line. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up. I'm going to do white because these stitches will be covered and then you can see it better. Um, this is upholstery thread or um, I've seen it called heavy duty thread. All it is is thick thread. Okay. So get a length of that. About a yard is enough. I'm going to go ahead and wax it. And then when I use it to do sew the strawberry together at the top, I double it because it's going to be under a tremendous amount of pressure when I close the strawberry and pull and pull and pull and pull to make the top nice. Okay, so double it up and load a needle. You kind of want a very, not a very long, but a longer rather than shorter needle to do this. But I mean, any needle will work. I, that's just my preference. Okay, so you're gonna do a loop start. So both ends are gonna go through the eye of the needle and then we'll do a loop start like what we do in our cross stitching, okay? So start right back here at the seam Go in at the seam right there and start it, okay? I like to um, go through the loop to start it. Okay, pull tight. I like to do a couple of little stitches here just to hold that seam to give it a little bit more strength. So I just do a couple of stitches. You know, it doesn't, not fancy stitches, just a couple of stitches. And get a knot here. Okay, do a couple of stitches. There's one and I'm gonna, it's, it's having a tendency to spring up here down on the bottom. So I'm gonna take a stitch right down here on the bottom to hold. What is the problem? Gravy. Okay, so now then, now I'm going to take just a running stitch all the way around. Right along the top, just a running stitch. So in and out, not real big jaunts, just maybe like a quarter of an inch run. And then pull it through if you don't have a freaking knot. And then again, just right along the top with of that folded over edge.
Okay, so we have the running stitch all around the top, okay? And now we're gonna fill it with walnut shells, okay? Now then, the first one, I put walnut shells about a half of a cup. This is a half a cup measuring cup. So I keep my walnut shells in a, you know, a Rubbermaid container. I buy them at the pet store. You wanna look for crushed English walnut shells. If it says kiln dried on there, I prefer those, but if you can't find those, then just make sure that they look dry, which most of them do, I've never seen them, and that they're cleaned, okay? Are clean, not like hulls and stuff. All right, so about a half of a cup, I put just a little bit in to start, then I take my chopstick. One of the best finishing tools that you will ever get is a chopstick. And let me tell you the best chopsticks, where you can find the best chopsticks, Walmart in the cooking section. They, they're long, they have this hand right, this writing on them, you can get like 12 of them for like two bucks. And these are the best chopsticks because they're longer than just like normal takeout chopsticks. Here's a normal takeout chopstick. Here is the Walmart chopstick. You can see a different difference right there. Longer. And it's heavier too. Okay, just a little tip. All right, so take my, my chopstick and I pack it down in that tip, okay? And you kind of want to feel, feel it, and you'll feel like it's getting firm, but you just want to keep on packing, 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 packing. You think you're not doing nothing, but you really are, and it's really firm, okay? All right, so then I take the rest, and you want to fill up the rest about to right there. See, there's about, you know, one inch from the top, okay? Then you wanna keep on, pack again, pack it down, pack it down, pack it down, pack it down. Start to pull this closed a little bit, okay? Just gently pull it closed as it starts to pull together, okay? The wax on there will help hold it. It won't be like loosey-goosey going in and outside, in and out because it wax gives it a little bit of friction so it won't, and then start packing again. Now then, if you see like you have right here a lump, see that lump? I'm gonna go right down along the side and smooth that lump, okay? Because I don't want any lumps. I want it smooth, 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 smooth. Just keep on working, packing those walnut shells, okay? Pretty tight, feels really great. I don't want it to like dent hardly at all. So I'm gonna pack some more. Now then, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going, I want, you know, if, if you look at a strawberry in a package at the store that you buy, a strawberry is nice and full, very round at the top. And that's what I want my strawberries to look like. It's very round and plump at the top. I can't really do that with walnut shells. So I get polyfill or fiber fill. So you get your fiber fill. And you stick it down in the top there. Take your stop chopstick and stuff it down.
Okay, it's nice and round. Now we're gonna start closing that berry, okay? So you wanna, this is why we, we use two threads because we're gonna do a tremendous amount of pressure on this. Look how nice and thick this, how nice and packed this berry is. It's exactly how I want my berries to look. So you just keep on pulling that, that thread tighter and tighter, okay? When you got it about the size of a nickel, then we're gonna start doing cross. We're gonna go across to the other side, okay? About the size of a nickel. Okay. All right, go take a couple of bites of the linen across and then pull it. And just work around that circle to close, close that opening. Okay, when you get it about like that, I'm gonna end off. So again, you take a bite, you pull it hard, and I'm gonna go one more time across and then make a lasso. Which is a loop. I'm gonna put my needle through it and put it through it a second time and then end off. And that makes a knot. Pull it really tight and then clip your ends, okay? All right, there we have one. I can't even dent it because it's packed so tight. Looks great. Okay, now we're gonna make our top. Okay, so now we have our berry, and now we need to make the cap. And what I did is I used my circle template. This, uh, yeah, this one was the one I wanted. All right, yeah. And I cut out a cap. 
see that'll be nice it won't cover any of the stitching I'm going to kind of mark where my center is by folding it in fourth like this and putting a pin in there and then I'm going to take chalk Taylor's chalk and I'm going to draw on those lines little petals as you can see and I'm going to just tap a little bit of glue and then put those petals on and then tap a little bit of glue I know that I'm going to have five petals you don't need a lot you just want to hold it in place get some golden thread and I'm going to double it up, load my needle, do a loop start in the middle. just kind of go around and tack all of those petals down to make sure that they are good in place. Okay, now we're going to take our button and we're going to add our button to the center of the flower. going to end off, make a loop, two times around, pull, Alright, so there, I took wool felt, and made my flower like this. Now I want to tack down each one of these petals. Well, they're tacked down already, but I'm going to put it on. I'm going to center it on here. I want to get the best looking for the front. And then 
put some pins on this just to kind of get the look. Make sure you can see from all angles. Does it look good? I think it needs to be over a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so pull it back out with the needle or with the pins in it. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the top here just to hold the top of the cap on just a little. Okay, put it back on and then again check to make sure you've got placement good. Check on all sides, make sure. Looks good. Put your pins in to keep it in that position. Okay. All right. Now then, we're going to go through and tack down the green cap, and I just want to tack it down in like four places. So, front and back and on the sides. Put a pin where you want to tack it at. Sure that it looks good again. Does it need to be pulled one way or the other like that one did? Does it look good? Equidistance around. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, and then we're going to just tack it with some green thread. I'm going to double it up. So I can have a loop start. We're going to start in the back. Right here. Pull this out, hit your felt, hit, pull it through the berry, and then I'm going to take another one through the berry and out through the felt and pull it tight. So we have our first tacking stitch. Now I'm going to go back into the felt and through the berry over to this, this uh, pin. And I find that this grabs the tip and pulls it out where you want it without making yourself bleed. And we're going to make another tacking stitch right here. Okay, through the felt, through the berry, and back up. Pull. If you feel like it needs to take another little tacking stitch, just do another small one. And then back in the felt and back over to this pin. twice through the lasso and end off and clip.
right, so there we've got our cap on, and now we just need to tack down these flowers and we're good to go. So for that, we're gonna get gold again. And I want these to float free, but I wanna make sure that they're tacked down good. So I'm just gonna go through the cap into the berry and back out and just kind of uh, make little tacking stitches. And there you have your berry. There you go. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Andrew, please remember that if you use my tutorials to help you finish your items, I give it freely. I just ask for my name to be associated with your finish to let everybody know that I helped you and where they can also find tutorials to help them. Thanks so much.